Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the celebrated podcast that explores your favorite looks in film, television, and fashion history. Through conversations with the fashion world's elite and award-winning hair, makeup, and costume designers on sets around the world, you will see and hear exciting tales from behind the scenes, career origin stories, and tons of advice and tips. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Look Behind the Look. We are again talking about Oscar nominees. This time we're talking to the team behind the film Golda. They are responsible for the transformation of Helen Mirren into the Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir in the film Golda. The film Golda is on Paramount Plus right now if you want to check it out. I highly recommend taking a look at these women's work. It is truly extraordinary work. We're speaking to Karen Hartley Thomas, who is the makeup and hair designer. Designer. She has previously been nominated throughout her career. In, in 2009, she was nominated for both a BAFTA and an Emmy for her makeup and hair design on Little Dorrit, which was a BBC production. And the following year, she received another Emmy nomination for Cranford, which was starring uh, Judi Dench and Imelda Staunton. And in 2011, Hartley Thomas was nominated for a BAFTA award for her work on Michael Samuel's miniseries, Any Human Heart. Susie Battersby is the prosthetic designer, and she trained at London College of Fashion, graduating with the first class honors in technical effects for performance, and furthered her sculpting skills, completing courses at the London Atelier of Representational Art and the Sculpture School. She's recently been designing prosthetics for Sex Education, Season 3, and Inside Number 9, Series 6. And we're speaking to Ashra Kelly Blue, prosthetics makeup artist, and she's been credited on projects such as You, Willow, and Greatest Days, and now Golda. So they're going to get into their process and all that happened on set, and I hope you enjoy our conversation. Thank you so much for joining me, all of you. This is very exciting because you are in the awards circuit, and I'm sure that is exciting and nerve-wracking. I I, I always like to ask how people are feeling about the whole situation. How how do you all feel? Um, (laughs) Susie, Susie. Yeah. To be honest, still in shock. Really? Really? Honestly, yeah, honestly, I think things like this make it feel more and more real. But I honestly don't think I'm really going to feel like it's true until we're on that red carpet. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so this was not one of those movies where you were like, let's get our Oscar, let's get our BAFTA. This was just a, a true putting together of an iconic woman. Okay, so 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 how yeah. did Golda all come together? What how did the team come together first? Can you tell me how you all have you all worked together? What was the process of assembling no, the team? Um no, I met Guy and was offered the job. Okay. I always say Guy had Guy had no option in giving me that job. It was, you know, it's a job of dreams. I really des it's one of the when you read a script like that and think yes, I've got to have this job. And I was very busy on, on a film. I was um, working with Hugh Jackman and they sort of gave me options of time. You, you can have nine till 9.30 or six till 6.30. And I looked and thought, well, six or 6.30, that's the dinner. Hugh, I, you can't have any checks <laughs> until 6.35. So I want to <laughs> Zoom with, with Guy. And he didn't have any options. As I said, I really, really just desperately wanted to do the job. Oh, I've worked wow. with Helen before. I did a thing, a film called The Duke with her. Okay, yes. The Duke, which I loved doing, and I really liked Helen so much. So I got the job and then immediately realised, well, we've got six weeks to turn this around, and it was actually six weeks later that no. we were shooting. No. So wow. I, yeah, so, I, you know, the euphoria of being off of the job, and then it sunk in and I thought, hang on a minute, because you just don't want to do something like that badly. Yeah, you yeah. know, you just really don't. It's it, a lot it, of a pressure. Turn it into a job of nightmares if you look at it. Like <laughs> so I went home and had to think about it. And then I sort of started to ring around and get people on the team. So I sort of phoned up Alex Rouse, who always makes Helen's wigs, and said, can you get me a wig in four weeks she said no I really can't I'm so busy 
Oh, wow. And I said three little words, Dame Helen Mirren, and I think she really wants to shoot me because she's. I think she's made Helen's, I don't know, 20 years, something like that. No. She couldn't say no to me. That was the beauty of it. When those three little words come out, not many people say no. So um, <laughs> we started on that. I then phoned up about eyebrows. I got in touch with Susie. You know, it's a massive big ask as well. So eyebrow, do, eyebrows. So all, all of it. Our eyebrows were the first thing that you thought of that we had to nail that that well it was the wig and the eyebrows and, the wig and, and the eyebrows spoken to Helen Sinead Kadam the costume mm-hmm. designer myself mm-hmm. we had a zoom with Helen to talk about it all because Helen was in Los Angeles and she was going off on holiday and I thought I don't really know how we're going to achieve it and Guy the director was adamant we have to have prosthetics okay so I said to him I have to get you in this weekend before you go away um and oh, well okay and, and you know she's never had a transformative makeup like that before ever no she's never had a prosthetic makeup so she was reluctant uh, I think I she see. had in her mind it would be a full face of prosthetic sure she couldn't move you know that's people's like a- perception of it so I said look let's just she well, what about just the wig and eyebrows I said well we'll get all that done and the contact lenses and stuff but let's get uh, you know a scan done of you before you go away and we'll do the pros- we'll make the prosthetics if you don't like it we'll do everything um in a month and if you don't like it we don't use it if we use some of it then let's just give ourselves sort of every option right so that's what we did she went in literally i think the next day and had the scan done that got sent over to susie are um, you in different areas? Er- where are you all located? We're was totally there- different. I didn't oh, okay, know yeah. We've never worked together before. None of it so can be easy. Like, none of it. <laughs> no, none of it's easy. It's the logistics. And it's, you know, we were fortunate because we haven't worked together before, oh. um, Susie and I, that we did come together so well with everything. Because yeah. when all components are being done all over the place, and, and they were, they had to be, you know, I was going around to local opticians trying out the best brow contact lens because madly that is one of the most difficult things they can I'm very sure flat, very unnatural it you know so all those components had to come together on a test a week before shooting and Susie and I just luckily came up with sort of sympathetic stuff both or, or you know that came together so well it was you know it was exciting but also terrifying i'm sure and i'm sure terrifying and yeah. and karen and susie how did you come together you'd heard of each other obviously and and you just it all worked <laughs> well, out right? okay i'll tell you i um, tell me. i don't think we did know it well i mean did you know of me i, I don't yes, know. We, no, I was, yeah i'd heard your name <laughs> i knew yes, you were. heard my name but <laughs> I, I, no, we'd never I worked was, together no we'd never worked together and i got my daughter um we were talking and I needed somebody to do it. And you know, it's it, it's the thing that people possibly might not have wanted to do. That kind oh, of look. Sure, in sure, sure, short sure. Time. sure. And I, got, I was talking to my daughter, who um, was 20, and she's a great one for the Googling. And she had a look and she said, I like the sound of this company, Mum, and I think they're all women. I think you oh, are all fantastic. women. So she said, try her. This was it. I mean, this is how things are. And Karen's daughter, the- Susie. Karen's daughter. No, I know. <laughs> it's so amazing. Alex, you can be my agent. <laughs> you can buy her a glass of champagne in Los Angeles, Susie. Um, and then I phoned up Sunita, who's our friend, and said, do you know Susie? And she said, yeah, yeah give her a go. She's very good. And I looked up what Susie had done which Susie told me she'd looked up what I'd done as well, and a little look on IMDb. And um, so it was like that, really. I mean, wow. we worked together on the next project subsequently to that. Um, yeah, because oh, you've got to be you, pretty you, brave. You two have worked together since then. Since well, we have I, I almost said the queen, I mean, so Golda. Yes. It's not been out yet. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we were fortunate, and we all worked very well together. Fantastic. And achieve that, you know, in such a short space of time. But it, it's it's a very, very daunting thing because honestly, the truth is I did go home that night and think I'm not actually sure because, you know, I, uh, you sit and wait for people to comment on your work. Oh, yeah. It's a, a, a iconic Helen Mirren thing, mm-hmm. iconic gold in my ear. And you know mm-hmm. that it's immediately going to get a lot of coverage, don't you? It's 
you know, it's a very the microscope woman, is out. The famous woman. Right, yeah. exactly. So it's you know you're icon there, an there. icon sandwich. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's so true. So you know that and expectations are always high. And I always say, you know, we're not scientists. We have to come up with it and mm. then repeat it every day. That's what exactly yes. the same every day. That's what I, I really I, notice. I haven't had, that is such a thing in our job, in, in any job you do, any film you do. Ashra, how did you come on to the project? Did you come through Susie? I did, yeah. So me and Susie have been working together for about three years now. Okay. Um, she's actually the person who gave me a foot in the door of, uh, oh. of prosthetics um, and took a chance with me when I didn't really have much in my portfolio. So, Why did you take a chance, Susie? <laughs> why, why did you take a chance on Ashra? What did you see? Well, I mean, I think, I don't know. You can You can get a sense from somebody when you meet mm. them, I think. What, whether well whether you're going to work well together for starters so when, for sure. when I first met her in person you know you I knew that we would get along very well and also we're very we're actually very different as artists we complement each other incredibly well mm. but her portfolio was so strong for somebody who had not actually been working for like that many years to be oh, honest wow. with you her, her her eye for detail is just second like second to none in my opinion um and a really just a really natural eye for color and and understanding understanding makeup to be honest so and she had done some prosthetics um so when she first worked for me which was for a different film um where we were doing some kind of swellings and stuff like that and I really threw it was diff it was it was post-covid so the workload mm -hmm. in the industry was quite crazy at that time yes um, and uh and I couldn't uh I couldn't go away on the shoot basically I was meant to and I couldn't because I had to be back in the workshop managing my other films and, and, and tv shows and I threw Asha right in the deep end and she she swam like crazy <laughs> and did a beautiful job and I knew I was like, right, this one's special because she didn't run away. She did an incredible job. Um, and every time I gave her a challenge, she just rose to the occasion. So when oh, Gold wow. came, Ashra was had basically stuck with me for what, like maybe, yeah, three or four months by that point, maybe. Yeah. And um, so when Golda came around and uh, I needed somebody to apply it with me, you know, I took, didn't I? I sort of said to you in the workshop, can we have a chat? I need to just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we, we had like, wow. even, yeah we hadn't um, even like had our first coffee and immediately oh, she was like I'm gonna have to have you apply it with me and I was oh, like, oh my gosh, gosh. <laughs> were you nervous I was it, it's a funny one because me and Susie we've thankfully we've actually done quite a few applications together um yeah. I'm I'm left-handed she's right-handed so oh my god like, that's really so funny that works Wow. Um, I'm also very tall and she's very small and so like we can just <laughs> move around with each other and I don't know there's this weird like sixth sense that we have where it's just like if she's working on something I can you know it's very synchronized detail. synchronized oh wow yeah wow. well that's meant to be for sure what, yeah, what were yeah. you going to say, Susie? I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to no, it was, it's just funny because obviously when you put your actor in the chair, obviously you don't want to be kind of being too chatty and busy anyway. Yeah. But I think especially because it was around COVID, we were still wearing masks and stuff. Oh. The amount of communication Asher and I had to have just with our eyes <sighs> was honestly, it kind of sounds a bit mad, but like we really had to rely on that synchronicity because mm. yeah, otherwise, you know, when we hit the ground running with this application for Golda, Ashra wasn't even actually at the camera test that I did. I did that on my own, establishing it. Oh, so wow. Ashra, yeah. I knew from, from previous jobs that Ashra's very, very good at picking up exactly the same colours I'm using, exactly the same technique. So she was basically mi just mirroring what I was doing yeah. on the other side. Oh, my and goodness. And it up, like, so quickly. So, yeah, it was, it, you know, she was obviously the right person for the job. I <laughs> What a beautiful dance. So, yeah, so, yeah. so what I noticed in this so much was the, you know, impeccable matching and it was just seamless and everything looked exactly the same. How did you do that? <laughs> well, <laughs> um, well, I have to, well, there's, there's actually quite a few people to sort of point out. So, okay. so first, Vincent Van Dyke effects they're based in LA and they actually did the scan and 3D print of Helen for us in LA because like Karen had mentioned we didn't none of us got a chance to actually see Helen in person until the camera test oh so we were working off really amazing photographs from them that they took obviously this incredible 3D print but they also made a okay. great color 
colour match for us as well. Mm. Oh, uh, just for the, the basic kind of colour to expect with her skin. So with using that firstly, it meant that when we ran our pieces, um, our like one of the painters I had, Nikki De Jong, she established the paint system we were going to do, and she did an impeccable do job, didn't yeah. she? Because she basically matched it so well, giving us a that lovely extra little bit of wiggle room for us just to add mm. to, ah. as you say, create that seamless blend. Because the thing with the pieces we were doing, because we didn't want to overwhelm Helen's face, a lot of our pieces are kind of finishing halfway, you know, over her face. So like the cheeks, mm. for example, they're not full cheeks. You know, the edges are kind of somewhere in the middle of her face, her neck yes. is halfway across. So Asher and I had nowhere to hide. So. Aside from the colour, a big thing that helped us is a technical thing with our pieces. One of them being that we made sure that we got the team to run the pieces with exceptionally thin cap plastic. And that's the plastic that encapsulate your prosthetic. So that oh, gives see. you a blend. And you can run them thicker, thinner. And I was asking the team to go as thin as they dare. Ah. Anything that's too thick is really going to show up on camera. And the other thing that's really special about the makeup we did is that we were we were actually R and Ding how soft we could make the silicone because mm -hmm. you can actually tweak the softness. And because you know Helen, you know, is in her seventies, and as was Golda, and we wanted that lovely soft feel to the skin. Yes, you, uh, you know, in in a woman of that age, it did mean that we were running our pieces at an exceptionally high percentage with a product called Deadna. Okay. So typically, most people run them at sort of 200. Some people push them to 220. We were pushing ours to 300, uh, uh, which meant this so, got so beautifully soft, soft I uh, see. feel. So that, coupled with the colouring, all of that, just means that we got a uh, like. As I'm glad you, I'm glad you can see that and that you yeah. said that, that it was really important to get a natural, a natural blend. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, how did it work with the water? Because when she's splashing so much and taking these baths with Camille Cotin, who's my favorite actress, by the way, yeah. I, oh, I'm i like so I, I, I'm just waiting for her Oscar turn. But um, I, I was like, how are they dealing with this bathtub and this water? How did you deal with it? Uh, did, you you know, did you cry? Well, I was nervous. I was definitely nervous. Very nervous. When this yeah. is, by the way, today, how is that going to be? You know, so we we just had to make sure it was really well sealed without yeah. overdoing it, uh, of course. Um, but, you know, the thing is, I'm always just a bit like, do you know what? Go for it. Because okay. I feel like when an actor feels like they can't, you know, truly perform like it belongs to them, it really gives the game away. Yeah. And I think that, I knew it could hold up, so you know, true. anything, anything that we had applied. I knew that if after a couple of takes, I could always touch stuff up. But, you know, I said to them, like, no, don't don't hold back. Like, if you need to just just as you would your own face. The thing, to be fair, she was very careful with, which I was very grateful. It's when she's sort of drying with her. Ah. Drying with the she was very good. I did tell her, I was like, please pat rather than rub. Well, that but, but and that works, right? Because yeah. that's what we do anyway. So the, and, and her skin is probably so sensitive and delicate yeah. as an older woman. So that would make sense character wise. So that's thank, thank God. <laughs> I, think, I think also the, the other thing was that um, when Helen was in the chair and we were applying the makeup, once everything was on, she would stress test everything, mm. um, you know, like move as much as she possibly could just fantastic. to really get a feel of what she could emote. And I think what was so lovely is that because the pieces were so soft, there wasn't anything that was stopping her from doing her job as, as well as she, as she did. Right. Um, because she, there was no hindrance basically. And right. I think that alongside, you know, Susie obviously being like, go for it. If, you know, splash, splash your face as much as you want. Um, but like also when she's emoting, there's no, there's no part of us being like, Oh, don't, don't do that. It's just uh -huh. like, no, do do what you can and um and yeah and I think she, it was wonderful to watch her just really become golder yes yes yeah. that, that must have been amazing to watch how, how long was the process every day um we had two hours oh my god and then yeah and then um Karen and Annette would uh would apply the wig and they had half an hour for that oh my god oh my god yeah. oh I had no idea and then how many days did you shoot so 30 days it was six week shoot 
five days a week. And Karen, uh, sorry, um, you know, uh, Helen rather, Helen was in every single scene. I mean, as yeah. you know, she's in the yeah. entire film. So she didn't have a day off. Oh um, my God. So yeah, it was pretty relentless. <gasps> wow, <laughs> that's amazing. And can you tell me a little bit about Liev uh, becoming Henry Kissinger? How was that? Uh, how did you approach that? Well, to be honest, that's something that Karen uh, should answer. Okay. Really, because, okay. Because you know, Li Liev didn't have uh, any prosthetics for that, so um, I know he had a beautiful wig made. Oh wow! Uh, but, yeah, there's a great story behind that because again, Karen just she moved heaven and earth to get that wig together really fast. Oh um, wow! Karen, yeah, Karen's probably having a complete anxiety attack right now because she can't, <laughs> can't get in back into the room. So the second that she gets back on this link, we will ask her about Leo. Yeah, she's um, got some great stuff to say about, about that because uh, that was a okay. yeah, really, that's really successful makeup and hair on that. It was beautiful. Oh, wow. Yes. I, I, I imagine that that was quite a, a challenge. Um, was there anything that was like any day that was particularly challenging to you? Or was it just like once you got into a routine, this was, you know, kind of Groundhog Day for you? Was there was there any fluctuation or like tomorrow's the day? Tomorrow is the <laughs> most, you know, the thing that we're going to stay up all night worrying about? I mean, to be honest, most, most, days did just feel like that mm -hmm. I mean it was so stressful oh was it yeah <laughs> because as we've said you know because it was on on Helen Mirren you yeah. know national treasure both here in the UK and in the states I would say you know everybody loves Helen yeah she's one of the best actors of the generation yes. and playing such an iconic woman so the pressure was always so high yeah. um but I think Karen would probably say this one of the one of the days that really stood out was when we had our first major close-up um because there are quite a few very very yeah. very shots of yeah. her eye mouth you know around her nose everything and yeah so the first time that happened me and Karen were on set and we both I think you know just grabbed each other's hands and thought oh my god what's happening especially because it happened <laughs> in the afternoon about an hour before wrap and that's you know that's not the time to do a oh, close no, that's so, so funny but, uh, but but the thing is, to our delight and our surprise, we were scanning the monitors, looking for problems, and we couldn't see any. You know, yes, that's I, the, you know, Karen did the, got these uh, contact lenses sorted, um, which again looked they looked fantastic. Sorry, I'm back. Yes, don't apologize. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh my gosh, that's a stressful thing, isn't it? Um, yeah. Speaking, yeah, speaking of stre so stressful things. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be up at 5 a.m. Um, <laughs> yes, Liev was a similar thing with Helen. We weren't 100% certain it was going to be Liev. So while the deal was being done, I thought, right, here we go. A bit like the Helen situation. Oh. I have to go for it. So I got in touch with Campbell Young in New York. Oh, wow. And I got, I bought, just got him to send me over Liev's shape and I started the wig already. So by the time he stepped off the plane... I had a wig for him, having not seen him. And I think three again, three days later, he was shooting. But that was, again, a thing of the research. We've had yes. so much help with research. With Helen, it was Golda's family that massively helped us. Oh, really? Um, oh, massively helped us oh, with, fantastic. you know, the fact that Golda had a manicure every week with clear nail varnish. She had nicotine fingers, the texture of her hair, the length of her hair how she washed it and left it and it went into curls. She'd kind of plait it at the nape and get it into a chignon. We knew so yes. much about her. And we had a lot of info on, obviously, on Henry Kissinger and a massive amount of push it, footage. You know, for both of them, that was the case. Oh, we wow. were, as a film, as a creative team, you know, the production designer, myself, costume, and our um, DOP, Lots of collaboration in the beginning about the look because you you know you have to do Sinead Kadal, the costume yes. designer, who's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, it was it was like that with Liev, but we permed it, we put mohair in. I mean, it, it's you know, it's just wow. a creation. Should we put it like that? Wow, wow. Now, now you mentioned nicotine fingers, my friend. Um, 
uh, she, I asked her if she had anything that she wanted me to ask you because she just watched this last night and, um, she was asking about the hands and she thought it was blood and symbolic, but, um, it was ni nicotine fingers, I assume is because you just brought that up and that's, that's, it was nicotine, amazing? but just, yeah. yeah, just on the inside of her fingers. But again, that was Golda's grandson ah. who told us that that she had nicotine fingers you can see isn't it? it's constant what an amazing detail change to my fingers. well they were amazing because they really did support helen they they were very very keen for helen to play their grandma ah. and guy told us that when they had a screening um and showed it to the family that they left and said that was our grandma We've just seen our grandma. What a comp. I mean, you don't need an Oscar. I mean, I'm not going to put that in the universe. But like that. <laughs> wow. That's that's like the ultimate award, right? Oh, that's amazing. Well, wow. that was amazing to hear, of course. Because yes. It's a strange thing, isn't it? Seeing a family member up there on the big screen and somebody else playing her. But of course, it, Absolutely. you know, you're going to get one of the world's best actors in Helen Mirren. You're yes. on a winner to start with, aren't you? Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. Um, we're redoing our um our our shelves and we found our White Knights um DVD and played it three times in a row. <laughs> and every time <laughs> Helen Mirren comes on, I just like we just stop whatever we're doing and just like that's her. Like it's so and you know, it's so funny how when I was watching Golda, like I can still see her in there, you know, but she's it's like an ultimate transformation in every way. But there's just that spark in there that you can see that that beautiful woman just in there still, you know. It's it's that's the that's it. And Susie must have said that in my absence, that that's what we wanted to achieve, you know. Love it. And the essence of Golda, but not hi Helen and Helen was obviously keen for that as well yes her eyes and were super get... active mm -hmm. yeah I mean she um you know she's one of the best actors in the world isn't she Helen Hands down. and a Hands consummate down. professional so you know you're halfway there with Helen yeah. why would you, why would you, you want to really that up? right <laughs> mm. right right <laughs> Right. Oh, my gosh, ladies. Is there anything you wanted to share with me uh, at all? We're sort of at the end of our time, but I lost you, Karen, um, for that time. But I so I wanted to make sure that that uh, that you told me all the good bits that you wanted, that you wanted. I can't to. remember what I did say. Running around this sort of I, mad Moroccan hotel. <laughs> oh, you're in Morocco? Oh, I, yeah, I'm in Morocco. Oh, my gosh. How exciting. Are you working on something right now? Yes. You can't tell me what it is. No, <laughs> it's not been announced. You will know about it, but it's not. I would have sort of, pos I didn't know it was top secret. But <laughs> oh, you're I like, do now. I do now because I was told that it was top secret. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, I, I'm really rooting for you, ladies. You are all amazing, and it's been amazing talking to you and hearing about all the incredible detail you put into this beautiful work. And congratulations to you all! Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you so Love much. To talk yes. to. We'll Thank talk. You. To, we'll talk to you for the next one. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok, produced by Jace Bartok and edited by Nicole Tucker. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look Podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.